This video shows a robotic colostomy takedown in a pediatric patient. Our patient is a 14-year-old female who was status post-laparotomy for complicated appendicitis, which resulted in an iatrogenic bowel injury. She had a subsequent Hartman's procedure performed through a 16-centimeter long incision and has lived with an end colostomy for the past three years. To avoid a subsequent laparotomy, we performed a robotic colostomy takedown. We began by taking the colostomy down and then placing a mini gel platform through the aperture. We then placed four 8 mm robotic trocars as shown in the diagram above. Our initial view with the laparoscope demonstrated extensive pelvic adhesions to the bowel, gynecologic organs, and the left lateral pelvic sidewall. These adhesions were taken down with a combination of electrocautery and sharp dissection. Once the pelvis was evacuated, we turned our attention to the long Hartman stump that was brought up to the anterior abdominal wall. Further investigation revealed a nest of twisted colon that was tethered together with many interloop adhesions. Using electrocautery, we took down the Hartman stump from the anterior abdominal wall. This aided in the investigation of the diverted distal bowel. It was difficult to tell, given the multiple interloop adhesions, where the original iatrogenic injury had occurred that resulted in the need for a Hartman's procedure. We used electrocautery to free up the adhesions between these limbs of bowel in order to help straighten out the colon and to facilitate eventual endoscopic evaluation of the distal bowel. We inserted a flexible endoscope to evaluate the mucosa of the distal bowel. The endoscope passed relatively easily, although there was some extraluminal compression by adhesions. For the most part, the mucosa of the distal bowel was healthy and pink. As we passed the endoscope more proximally, we did enter an area where there was either diversion colitis or was in fact the site of the prior injury to the bowel that necessitated the need for the Hartman's procedure. Given these findings, we elected to perform a segmental resection of the sigmoid colon to ensure that the anastomosis was performed to bowel that was healthy and viable. We elevated the sigmoid stump and used electrocautery to perform the dissection of the sigmoid vessels. A window was made in the mesentery to help identify the pedicle. We switched over to the vessel sealer to seal and transect the mesentery up to the wall of the bowel and then to turn our attention to the pedicle. The sigmoid vessels were sealed and transected with two firings of the vessel sealing device. We then turned our attention to transection of the sigmoid colon by using a green load of the robotic stapler. The specimen was then completely freed and we were able to move it down into the depths of the pelvis. We elected to perform an isoperistaltic anastomosis. Here is a primer on how this is created. We place the sigmoid and the rectum side by side, and then utilizing either vicryl or silk, we place several tacking sutures. Full thickness enterotomies are created using the hot shears as shown in the diagram above. A linear stapler, usually a green load, is then inserted through the enterotomies. It is closed and then fired to create the common channel. Using a 2O monofilament barbed suture, we close the common channel in a running fashion. Let's see how this played out in our patient. First, we set up the anastomosis by tacking the sigmoid colon to the rectum using 3O vicryl sutures. Three separate interrupted sutures were utilized to lay the colon side by side with the rectum to prepare for the intracorporeal anastomosis. The wristed instruments enable us to suture more facilely, especially as the anastomosis is located in the upper portion of the pelvis. Next, we turn our attention to creating the enterotomies in the sigmoid and the rectum to enable the passage of the stapler. Once the openings are wide enough, the two arms of the stapler can then be passed atraumatically down the limbs of the bowel. By clamping and firing the stapler, a common channel is then created between the sigmoid and the rectum. 
Upon removal of the stapler, we can see the common anatomy that remains. This can be closed with the barbed suture. Three mLs of ICG are injected to confirm the vascular supply in firefly mode. A 2O barbed monofilament suture is used to close the common anatomy. This particular suture has an eyelet through which the needle can pass to lock the suture into place. The barbed suture is preferable when sewing robotically as it allows us to avoid knot tying in the tight space. The suture is run from left to right and then from right to left. This essentially creates a double layer closure of the common anatomy. After completing the anastomosis, the needle and the instruments were removed. We then took the specimen out through the gel port platform. The fascia was closed at the colostomy aperture site. The dermis was then purse stringed using a 2O vicral. The patient's postoperative course was uneventful, with flatus passed on postoperative day number two and discharge home on postoperative day number three. She had full return of bowel function on postoperative day number four while at home.